Aloha Mai Kako, a Como Mai Curtain Call from a Distance, a program of reviews, previews, interviews, and features of and or with the great art and artists on Maui and beyond. I'm Paul James Brown, and I'm coming to you from my home office where I have been conscientiously practicing self isolation. Working Man is a film I found to be close to my heart. I grew up in the former hardware city of the world. I remember so well when the factory started to shut down and the trauma it caused as the hard scrabble industrial city transformed to a suburb of the capital of the insurance world. Working Man tells the story of personal and employment loss and the pain they cause and how it is overcome. Here is the trailer. Be home for supper. Two o'clock same is full day. You're free to leave. Nick has put in half a day just to collect our last check. Look, I'm gonna be out of work the same as everybody else. Guy knows he's not getting overtime, right? Yeah, he knows. He's just been with the company a long time is all. Look, just make sure that he's gone before you lock up. Last thing the company needs is some broken down geriatric getting left behind. I have my circle today. Grocery shopping. I see you after. That ain't where a man like that belongs. He had a son, you know. For many folks, the factory is the very heart of this town. What are you doing? I'm going to work. I'll be damned. You just disappear. You're not here. I am. I was. Allery, we can't have you in here. We just can't. Why are you doing this? It's just something I need to do. It's a small town. It's hard to keep secrets around here. You want in that factory? They ain't gonna rest us all, Allery. You did this? Not me. They're out there because of you. Former workers have re-entered the plant and pledged to fulfill the outstanding orders promised to clients. I just want to do my job. You really started something here, this statement of yours. I'm not making any statement, but you are. Thing is, a person needs a job to survive, but you need work to feel like you're worth something. I'm sure you recognize the lead in the film from the nearly 40 years he has spent as a character actor in film and on television. But I'll bet you didn't know his name. Now you do. It's Peter Garrity. He plays Allery Clark, who we know from the start of the film has suffered some kind of deep loss, but we don't learn until well into the film what that loss is. For the first half hour, he says virtually nothing, answering questions in monosyllables and there are long segments of silence. After a while, you begin to wonder, where is this going? His equally suffering wife, Iola, played by the great Talia Shire, the only actor in the film most people will know from her Academy Award nominated performances in The Godfather and Rocky, is desperately trying to reach him. But in scene after scene, we see them going through the motions of life. He has shut her out. We presume it was due to the yet to be revealed distress. Allery gets up, walks to work, eats lunch, takes his break, comes home, eats dinner, and goes for a walk. That is his life. When the plastics factory closes due to a corporate buyout, he refuses to admit it and continues to go to the factory every day like a programmed robot. The other workers wonder what he is up to and joke about his seeming work obsession. Even though there is no power, Allery busies himself doing janitorial and maintenance work. The company management gets wind of Allery's new avocation and isn't too happy about it, removing him with the assistance of local law enforcement and warning him not to return. Walter, the powerful Billy Brown, another background character actor with more than two decades of experience, observing this along with the whole neighborhood, comes to Allery and lets him know he has the keys to the factory 
and intends to let him back in. Walter proves to be more resourceful and succeeds in turning on the power and informs Allery he has contacted the customers with outstanding orders when the plant was unceremoniously shut down and they have agreed to honor their contracts if the company will honor theirs. The next thing you know, most of the former staff have observed what is going on and they want to join. The factory is humming and all is right with the world. But is it? Will the company call the cops to clear the factory of the more than 20 workers? Will they be able to fulfill the orders? Will the owners leave the power on? These and other questions remain to be answered in this most excellent film. And I guarantee where this film goes will move you profoundly and you will not see it coming. Robert Jury has been a screenwriter for HBO, Disney, and Fox for 25 years, but Working Man marks his debut as both director and creator of this excellent original screenplay. This film follows the trend of indie films being more like European cinema than blockbuster American movies. It has an almost documentary look to it. There are no real Hollywood star types. The actors by and large look like real people you would see in the grocery store out and about. Mr. Jury has said he wanted to capture the spirit of Midwest factory workers, but he has successfully captured the spirit of not only that location, but East Coast industrial workers as well. This I know because, as I said, I grew up in an industrial center in the Northeast. I suspect Mr. Jury has been able to represent all factory workers with this project. Every factory I ever worked in had an Allery in it. A guy who does his job, stays to himself, and lives a life of quiet desperation, monotony, and emptiness. Whether they had the same reason as Allery to be like this, I do not know. However, this film has a fantastic aspirational aspect to it that moves it from a mere narrative drama to a hopeful cry of worker solidarity in the face of corporate takeovers. It also takes on ways to cope with extreme grief and how circumstances conspire to bring out leadership in the most unlikely places. I doubt this film will receive the recognition it deserves, but Peter Garrity, who is 80 but looks in his 60s, certainly deserves an Academy Award nomination for creating Allery Parks. Mr. Garrity, with his massive beer belly and penguin-like strides, embodies the weight this character is carrying throughout the film, and when he awakens to his calling, he transforms not only verbally, but also visually. It is a stunning performance that starts out so low-key, it is off the piano. But by the conclusion of the film, we understand who Allery is, why he does what he does, and how he becomes, or perhaps more accurately, returns to who he was before the film began. Talia Shire, as his mousy wife, Iola, clearly loves him unconditionally. She puts up with his extreme lack of communication, and it is not until well into the film when we understand this behavior has not always been the case. She tries desperately to pull him out of the funk he is in, but this kind of grief can only be purged personally. The patience she portrays is a saintly thing of beauty. Billy Brown's Walter is the most surprising character in the film. Mr. Brown is an imposing actor who resembles a black bearded Mr. Clean. He has the frame of a bodybuilder, but the demeanor of a kind and gentle soul until he reveals who he truly is. When he does, the film takes a radical hairpin turn and moves in an entirely unexpected direction and the penultimate scene is both touching and climactic at once, with tour de force performances from both Mr. Garrity and Mr. Brown. The film is on Showtime, and it is in the running for a Screen Actors Guild Award. It should be up for the big ones, too. It deserves both Academy Award and Foreign Press Association Award recognition. If you like the pace, intelligence, cinematography, and profundity of European films, you will love Working Man. Well, that's Curtain Call from a Distance for this week. Thanks for tuning in. Next week, I'll have a review of the Hoi Noi Owls annual jury member show. I'm Paul Janes Brown. Ah, hui ho.